you turn it in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. You know, throughout the past couple of weeks as um, different places have been preparing for this 4th of July holiday, you see a lot of uh, homes put their flags out, their American flags, a lot of different cities and towns will display American flags on you know, all the light poles and things like that. And, and um, I got to notice in those, you know, those are always uh, nice to look at and, and you know, uh, kind of remind you of, of, of who we are as a nation, what we stand for, and, and what the, uh, the, the flag signifies. Uh, you know, the, the flag has always uh, stood for freedom. The flag has stood for liberty. And, and you know, around the world, when, when other people groups and other nations see uh, the stars and stripes on our flag, they know exactly who it is. And um, I was thinking about those things, and, and uh, I was drawn to Exodus chapter 17, uh, and before we get into that text, and we'll give you a little, little history about where we are in the timeline of biblical history. So in Exodus chapter 17, we find ourselves in the place in history where Israel is in the wilderness. They're headed toward Canaan. They're headed toward the land of promise. Now this is uh, just a, a little bit shy of three months, just a little bit less than three months of them leaving Egypt. And so Historically, we have seen them cross the Red Sea on dry ground. They have been provided uh, meat to eat in the form of, of quail. They had had uh, bitter waters made sweet by the direction of the Lord. They had been provided manna, this, you know, the bread-like thing that they ate. Uh, and they were also uh, provided with water from a rock up to this point. And so the Lord has not only preserved them, he's protected them, he's provided for them, and, and, and they haven't even got to Mount Sinai yet and received the Ten Commandments. And so the Lord is, is, is always on their side. The Lord is always there for them, providing for them, protecting uh, them, and, and, and offering them provision along the way. And we find ourselves... Uh, beginning in verse 8 today, Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 8. And this is their first confrontation that's recorded uh, upon leaving Egypt. And we know, that, like, like I said just a moment ago, they crossed the Red Sea. And, and Pharaoh's army had pursued them. And when they crossed over on the other side, and, and, and as Moses uh, led the, the, the children of Israel across, when they all got across and Moses had had let his, his hands down and the staff went down and the waters came back together and destroyed the, the, all of the army of Pharaoh that had pursued and chased after the nation of Israel as they began to leave Egypt and cross the Red Sea. And so here we find them uh, in their first actual confrontation of, uh, after leaving uh, the land of Egypt. And it tells us beginning in verse 8, then... Amalek, which Amalek happens to be a, a, one of the grandsons of Esau. And you know the, the story there, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob and, and Esau uh, were, were the twins and, and, and brothers, and they, 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 they just fought, and, and just, they had a lot of discord. And, and so this was, uh, this was Esau's grandson, Amalek, and these were his descendants. And, and oftentimes... Uh, in the Bible, you'll you'll hear just just the uh, the, the first name uh, referred to as as a people group, and so that's why it says Amalek. It wasn't just one one person named Amalek; it was his descendants, the people group that had descended from him. And so, uh, Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. That just happens to be the name of the place where they were camping at. There was uh, shade there. There was water there, and so. Um, they were there and they camped out and, and, and Amalek comes in and, and, and fights against them. In verse 9, Moses says to Joshua, 
Choose men for us and go out and fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And Joshua did just as Moses told him and fought against Amalek. And so Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed. But when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. And Moses' hands were heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. So his hands were steady until the sun had set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this in a book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua, that I will utterly wipe out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. In the original language, it would be Yahweh Nisi or Jehovah Nisi. And that's what that translation means. The Lord is my banner. Now, by definition, a banner we would refer to as, as the flag. I mean, this is a banner of the Christian flag. This is the banner of the United States of America. A banner would, would represent a nation. It might represent uh, an army. It might represent a group uh, within the army, a special group of troops. A banner could be uh, a, a, an insignia or, or the likeness bearing uh, something on a device or a, a motto or a slogan. Maybe you see people march in political demonstration and they carry a banner, uh, you know, that says something on it. Uh, a banner could be uh, something that was used to, uh, in, in medieval times and, and in those days, to represent a clan or, or a kingdom. A banner could even be something as simple as, as a sign that is painted that is hung across a street or an entryway. Um, you know, sometimes... Uh, churches will hang a banner out front that says VBS this week or VBS next week. It's just something to identify, to draw attention, and to convey a message. Um, in, in journalism, if you read the newspaper every morning, that main headline across the top of your newspaper is called a banner. And if you like to uh, look around on, on the internet, all those little informational things that you see that pop up on the bottom of your screen, those are banners. They provide information. They, they, they demand your attention and they draw your eyes to the message that they're conveying. But one thing about it, a banner is sure. It's like I said moments ago, when you look at the stars and stripes, you know what that stands for. You know what that identifies as. And, and that's what a banner does. A, a banner identifies all those who see it know the who that is represented. And so Moses built an altar and he called its name, the Lord is my banner. And so that day moving forward, Moses and all of the people of Israel, when they, when they would worship and they would recall what happened that day, they were projecting their flag, putting up their banner that the Lord is theirs. That, that, that means that they belong to him. They are his. And so as, as we read about Moses, how that he stood on the top of the hill, I mean, could you, could you picture Moses standing up there and as he held the staff up, it, it identified to the battle that was going down below in the valley who was standing there ready for them. The Israelites looked up and they would see Moses and they would see that staff, the same staff that was held out as they parted over the Red Sea just a couple of months ago. The same staff that was used to touch a rock, to hit a rock, and it provided nourishing, refreshing water. That same staff was, was their banner, so to speak. That's what they looked to. That's what they identified themselves as as being God's chosen people. And so as Moses stood there and he held his staff out and the battle kept going back and forth and back and forth, you know, you, you can only stand here like this for so long and not, not actually be a statue. 
Moses began to get tired. It says that, that Moses' hands were heavy. Have you ever thought about you know, toting, toting something? Is it easier to hold it out here or is it easier to hold it in here? It's much easier to hold it close, isn't it? But when you're looking for encouragement, when you're looking for inspiration, and when you're looking for an identification, what do we see? We see that flag or something stuck out and it's being waved. And it's grabbing attention. Think about your, you know, your favorite sports team. After a big win, what do they do? They run on the field with a flag with the logo or the, or the mascot on it. It's a celebration. But it, it identifies the victor. And that's what Moses was, was doing for these people. I mean, he, he had heard their grumbling already for, for three months. They're fussing. They're complaining. I mean, they said, this God that we're going to serve, is he bringing us out here in the wilderness to leave us for dead? Us and all of our animals with no water to drink? And the Lord would always come through, and the Lord would always provide. He gave them food. He gave them water. He gave them direction. And as he stood there, and his hands began to get heavy, his arms were tired. It says that, that Aaron and, and Hur came up, and, and they fixed him a place to sit down. But yet so that he, kind of, kind of like a stool. You know, maybe, maybe he wasn't just completely standing up, but he was propped up. And he could still hold his hands up. And the staff was still up in the air. And as his arms began to get tired and as they would droop, Amalek's side would, would, would take over. And they'd begin to win. And, and, and Moses would see what's going on. And he would get a little energy and get a little courage, a little strength. And he'd hold his hands up higher. Then he'd get tired again. And he would begin to drop. And so they one got on one side and one on the other. And they held his hands up. Until the sun set. Until that day was complete. And Joshua and the Israelites were victorious. And as Moses did that for the people of Israel. God told him to write the account of this battle in a book. On a scroll. Some translations say write it in the book so that it would be remembered. And it was then that Moses built the altar and he called it the Lord is my banner. Moses was, was building that altar and it would be the same as if we were planting a flag, raising it up as a symbol, as a reminder, as identification. The name that proclaims God's leadership and the protection of his people, Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. See, a banner is something that identifies and unifies a particular group of people. We, we, we have a lot of controversy surrounding the flag today, but, but as a whole, I would say that most Americans look at that flag and they say, that flag represents me. Because I'm an American. The Israelites saying the Lord is my banner was a way of identifying themselves as, as a group of people who were together following God. That's how they identified themselves as God's people. The Lord is my banner. A banner can also function to, to rally the troops. How many, how many stories have you read about and heard about of, of, of American soldiers being at war? And just the, just the glimpse of that flag. Giving them just exactly what they needed to maintain and continue on. The altar that Moses built there marked the place where God intervened on behalf of his people. And he promised to utterly defeat the enemy. If you look at throughout history, there's not any more mention of the uh, uh, Amalekites. Amalek's descendants were wiped out eventually. 
So a banner not only identifies, but, but a banner encourages. It's, it's, it's there to, to rally. Think about the, the famous sculpture of the raising of the flag at Iwo Jima. And you have all those, all those Marines standing around and they're pushing that flag up. It's, it's, a, it's a symbol of encouragement. It was a symbol to, to know that, that even in the midst of, of the chaos that was going on around, that there was something familiar, something that they could identify with, something that would encourage them to keep on keeping on. You know, it's kind of, you think about the way that the battle was, was fought and won just, just because of Moses' ability to keep the staff raised up in the air. The way, the strange way that that battle was won left no doubt as to who was responsible for the victory. It wasn't, it wasn't Moses. Moses was obedient, but it was the Lord who gave the victory. It was only when the staff of God was being held up that the Israelites were victorious and had the upper hand. When Moses' hands were heavy and when he got tired, the Amalekites had the upper hand. And you think about life. Think about our daily walk and our daily struggles. When when the Lord is lifted up in our life, it really feels like we have the upper hand, doesn't it? Because we do. Because we are His people. But when, when our hands get heavy, when we get tired, and when we're struggling spiritually, the enemy gets the upper hand. And we need help. We need that encouragement of fellow believers come alongside us and, 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 and prop us up and, and maybe even to help us hold our hands up. The battle that day was not won by military might. It was not won by a superior battle plan. It was not won by strategic anything. It was won by the power of God. The battle is the Lord's is exactly what young David said to the Philistines just prior to him running. If you read the story of David, it says that when he has selected those smooth stones that he ran to the battle line to face Goliath. And when he got to that line, he, he put selected his rock and he put it in that sling and he twirled it and let it go. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47, this is what it says. This is David's words. He says that this entire assembly, talking about Israel and the Philistines, that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save by the sword or by the spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. See, David was inspired because Goliath and the Philistines had mocked Israel. They had mocked God. So a banner identifies and encourages, but it also inspires. I mean, we like we look at this flag and, and we, you know, we like to call it old glory. Old glory has inspired men to do great things for the cause of liberty and for the cause of freedom for 245 years now. That's how old our nation is. 245 years. See, the Israelites, they, they, they fought under the direction of God. They fought under the direction of Jehovah Nisi. But it was under the Lord's banner and with his help that they fought. In his name and in his strength, they conquered. So as Moses stood with his raised staff, those people that were down there fighting with Joshua, they identified themselves as God's people. That staff being held up in the air was, was their flag. And they were encouraged to go on when they saw that staff up there. Even though the day had been long and Moses was tired and they were tired. When they looked and they saw Moses with his arms stretched out and that staff up in the air. 
and were able to continue on. And they were inspired to victory. They might have looked up there and saw her on one side and Aaron on the other. And Moses just do it. Maybe his arm was shaking. He was so tired. But he said, the Lord's got this. The Lord's going to use us to, to be able to win. Look what Moses is doing for us. See, those accounts like this throughout the Bible were recorded so that the future generations would be able to, to hear of God's faithfulness to his plans and his promises, to hear of God's love and protection for his people, and as a reminder of God's strength and security over his children. Verse 14, the Lord told Moses, write this for a memorial in the book. Moses was already writing things down. He was already uh, scribing the events that were transpiring, and later on he would write and compile those things together to make the first five books of the Bible that we have in the Old Testament. So the, 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 the composition of this book was already in, in progress. And then he says not only write this book, write this in a book for a memorial, but he says recite it or recount it to Joshua. Literally, what the Lord said was place it in the ears of Joshua. You see, Joshua was down there in the back. He just saw what was going on. A lot of times we go through life and we experience certain things. And we know our part of it. But until someone on the outside or someone who's on the fringe tells us what they saw, what they witnessed, or what they happened to see transpire. Do we really take it and appreciate our experience all the more? Joshua was second in command. Joshua was the military leader. Joshua was the next in line to lead after Moses. Don't you think that the Lord knew what he was doing when he said, write these things down and put it in the ear of Joshua? Joshua was going to need these memorials, these reminders, and these motivators to continue to obey and serve God and lead the people at the same time. See, all the things that the Lord did, it wasn't, wasn't just because of Moses or just because of Joshua. It was because of all of them. So the Lord said, those are my people. He did it for them. And he'll do it for you if you're his. Hey, we all need reminders from time to time, don't we? You write stuff on your calendar. You set alarms and notifications in your in your phone. We all need reminders. But the important things that we need to be reminded of are who's that we are, our identity. You're a child of God. You're special to Him. He loves you. We all need encouragement. But hey, you got this. I'm praying for you. When you hear someone say those words, I'm praying for you, that's just like looking up on that hill and, and seeing Moses with his hand stuck out with the staff in it. That's encouraging. And we could all use some inspiration. We all get stuck in a rut doing the same old, same old, same old. We need that inspiration. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. He's our flag. Christians, church, he's our flag. We all need those reminders, just like the Lord said to Moses, write this down and put it in the ear of Joshua. This reminder, we all need reminders of, of how that we may have been able to get through some of the hard days that, that that help us to keep on keeping on through the not so hard days. If we can, if we can overcome this situation, surely we can overcome the next situation. Because the Lord's our back. We are His. He's encouraging to us. And he inspires us through His Holy Spirit. Psalms chapter 60, verse 4 and 5. 
the psalmist says, you have given a banner to those who fear you, referring to his people, those who uh, revere him. The psalmist says, you've given a banner to those who fear you that it may be displayed because of the truth, that your beloved may be delivered and saved with your right hand. And hear me. Psalms chapter 20, verses 4 through 8. The psalmist says, May he give you what your heart desires and fulfill your whole purpose. Let us shout for joy at your victory and lift the banner in the name of our God. May the Lord fulfill all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories from his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and others take pride in horses, but we take pride in the name of the Lord our God. And then he goes on to say, they collapse and fall, but we rise and stand firm. So what are we looking, what are we identifying as? What are we looking to for our encouragement, for our inspiration? What, what flag are we displaying as a Christian? as a church, as the body of Christ. Jehovah Nisi is a reminder to us as believers that we can be victorious as we honor the name of the Lord and rally to him as our banner. But we gotta look to him. We can't just be down there in the trenches, down there in the valley with our head down, kind of stuck up in the shadows, hoping that everything will pass by and not look up. We can't, we can't get by without looking up. So what flag are we displaying for the world to see? What are we identifying as? Where is our encouragement from, coming from? Where is our inspiration coming from? Personally, what does your banner say to them? Do people look at you and, and, and they see the flag that you're waving and does it say... I'm a child of the king. Does it say self, self, self? What does your banner say? Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. I belong to him. I'm encouraged by him and I'm inspired by him. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look into your word and share. Lord, as a reminder, in our ears, as Christians, we identify as yours. We are encouraged by you and the love you have for us, the provision and the protection you offer us, Lord, and we are inspired by you. We are motivated by the Holy Spirit to serve you and to be about the business of your kingdom. And Lord, I pray today as, as we observe this day of independence, Lord, that we would be reminded again in our ears that true freedom, that true independence comes from a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that he is truth and the truth is the only way in which we are truly set free. So Lord, we pray that today we would display our banner proudly as being your child. And if there's one here today, Lord, who does not have that identification, Lord, I pray that you've spoken to their heart and that they would come to know you. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Take your mobile book and turn to